Hello everybody! Today we're looking at the latest movie from director Guy Ritchie, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, starring Henry Cavill and Aza Gonzalez. This is very loosely based on the story of Operation Postmaster, carried out by the Special Operations Executive during World War II and supposedly Ian Fleming's inspiration for the James Bond novels. German U-boats have been making life difficult for the British Navy, and stopping them directly has proven to be nearly impossible. And so they devise a black ops mission to sabotage a cargo ship, supplying the U-boats with equipment vital to their operation. Without those supplies, they don't have to take the U-boats out because they'll effectively be dead in the water. The mission is undertaken by a team of soldiers led by Major Gus March Phillips. They are quite mad, and they'll need to be. Guy Ritchie's filmography has been hit and miss for me. On the one hand, he made Snatch and Sherlock Holmes. On the other hand, he made the Swept Away remake and the sequel to Sherlock Holmes. And somehow the live action Aladdin, I still do not understand how that happened. But anyway, while this is certainly not perfect, I think it is one of his better efforts. While the movie is based on the real Operation Postmaster, this is a fictionalized and somewhat silly take on the story. Every member of March Phillips' team, including March Phillips himself, is comically cool under pressure. I don't think I have ever seen anyone so calmly mow down large groups of Nazis. Part of the SEO's mission involves rescuing Major Jeffrey Appleyard, who has been captured by the Gestapo, and apparently their preferred method of torture involves hooking a car battery up to his nipples. And I'm not sure what was more unsettling about this, the fact that that was their chosen method of torture, or the fact that he didn't seem to be all that bothered by it. When they ultimately storm the base he's held at and rescue him, he's just like, Ah, Gus, old boy, good to see you. Say, be a chap and unhook that car battery. It's not terribly comfortable. And that's about the only reaction they get out of him. And that's basically how everyone is in the movie. They all speak in a very classy and sophisticated manner. They are the epitome of British class. Even when one considers that most of them are homicidal maniacs. Unfortunately, because everyone talks and acts pretty much the same way, they don't really have much of a chance to stand out. Alan Richson, who plays Anders Lassen, does have a chance to stand out, mostly because of his body count. He is one of the aforementioned homicidal maniacs and maybe enjoys killing just a little too much. Then again, he is killing Nazis, so I get it. And of course, Gonzalez stands out because she's the only woman in the group. She plays Marjorie Stewart, and her task is to use her feminine wiles to seduce the SS commander in charge of the ship that they're trying to sabotage. But she is not just a pretty face, she is also a damn good shot. And of course Henry Cavill stands out, but that's partly because he's Henry Cavill, and partly because of that amazing mustache he's got going on. The other SOE members are basically interchangeable. And because all of them are ridiculously cool under pressure, there's not a whole lot of suspense or tension. Of course, part of that comes from the fact that this is based on a true story, so going in, we already know what's going to happen. But the other part of it is, they are entirely too good at what they do. They rarely appear to be in any significant danger, just casually walking into enemy territory and mowing down Nazis as they go. The action sequences are well put together for what they are. Plenty of shooting, stabbing, and explosions, and a whole lot of dead Nazis. But they have all the tension of a Sunday afternoon stroll, and I get that that's the joke, but I'm not sure it works in the movie's favor. Even when things don't go exactly as planned, because in these types of spy movies they never do, it's just a minor setback. I will say I did like the jazz soundtrack overall, I thought it fit the movie's tone pretty well, although there was a very strange rendition of Mac the Knife that I found a bit jarring. It's like Gonzalez was singing in one key, but the orchestra was just kind of doing its own thing. It was weird. Overall, the movie has a sense of humor and plenty of action, and while I think the lack of tension keeps it from being great, I still enjoyed it. And if you want to see some classy British gentlemen and one lady mowing down Nazis, it's worth a matinee. And that's all I have to say about the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Till next time, take care.